What is going on, everybody in Wrestling Review Society's Facebook page, Real Pro Wrestling's uh, YouTube page. I apologize, Wrestling Review Society's YouTube page, Real Pro Wrestling's YouTube page, and twitch.tv slash yo Kevin. Guys, we have a great interview set for you guys tonight. You guys have been asking for this one ever since I dropped that video of, let's call it a brief encounter uh, with Mr. JDX at the uh, Riot Pro Show. Um, so we're going to get into all of that coming up in the next 45 minutes, guys. But just before I bring my guest on here, um, I want to take a chance to plug our amazing sponsors who make this show happen each and every time I turn this camera on, first of which is going to be A-Rock Designs. Guys, this is my wife's custom business. She makes all those cool wrestling cups you see floating around, uh, whether it be non, whether it be wrestling-related or non-wrestling-related. Hit up A-Rock Designs on Facebook or arockdesigns.com and place all of your custom orders today. Also, guys, storefrontier.com slash wrestling review society for all of our merch. And lastly, Fusion Water Bottles. Guys, this is our newest sponsor. This is a filtered flavored water bottle, and all the magic is in this white little filter right here. There's a dial on the front of it, one through nine, so if you want a little bit more flavor, crank it up. If you want a little bit less, turn it down, and if you want to save your flavor for later, you can turn it all the way off. But it does have energy and fusion properties in it, guys, so it's going to help you get all throughout the day without that harsh crash. If that's something you're interested in, in the description of this video, you can find my link. If you use my custom link, you'll save 20% on your first order and 10% on every order after that. So with that being said, guys, and that out of the way, I want to go and get my guest on here because I'm really looking forward uh, to being able to uh, speak to him. This is one of the first, if not the first times we're going to speak since that happened. Uh, but we both agreed backstage, you know, the last wrestler, I I've only had two wrestlers ever put their hands on me. The last one, Bud Heavy. We all saw how that interview ended. Um, we've agreed to keep this professional. I really want to get to know this man, and I want you guys to get to know him. So, ladies and gentlemen, the man with the self-proclaimed biggest arms in Florida wrestling. Let's see if that's let's see if that's the case, ladies and gentlemen. JDX, JD, how you doing, man? Good, man. What's going on? Not not much, man. Not much. Um, how's your day, man? I know you just got off work, pulling extra duty with this interview. So, on behalf of me and the viewers, I want to thank you for doing that, man. But uh, how's everything been going, man? It's been a while since uh, Riots ran a show. Uh, it's been a while since I've seen you. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's been a little while. You know, life happens. Um, sometimes stuff comes up, stuff gets in the way. Just kind of just got to deal with it, really. Um, yeah. That's just kind of where I'm at now. Oh, no, absolutely, man. And I'm sure uh, this thing called COVID that pretty much ran our lives for last year uh, wasn't helping at all. Um, no. But we started out with, you know, you say you have the biggest arms in Florida wrestling. And I, I mean, I'm not in Florida wrestling, but I think mine are pretty big. I think I think I, I think I give you a run for your money. But um, I follow your social media pretty closely, man. You spend a lot of time in the gym, like a yeah. lot of time. What, yeah. What's a what's a typical week like workout regiment look like for you? Because you you pretty much you, you don't pay a gym membership. You pay them rent. Let's be honest. Pretty what does your typical regiment look like? You know, it really just kind of depends on on like what my goals are. So um, right now I'm in a process of of adding muscle. So, you know, I'm going to be doing that for probably about, you know, six weeks. And then I'll spend six weeks um, cutting weight so that way I don't have to cut too quickly. Um, so it just depends on like what I got coming up that determines, you know, how how fast or how much, you know, I need to do. But on average, um, probably about, you know, if I'm trying to trying to add muscle, maybe about two hours a day, um, about five days a week, cardio twice a day, every single day. Mm, I, I, I hate I hate cardio. Um, yeah. I, I absolutely hate it, man. And uh, we already got some comments coming in from the uh, viewers that are watching. But before I get to those, I just got to ask because I just started getting back um, into, you know, going to the gym regularly, um, through having four kids and, and work and everything. Everybody always makes excuses, myself included. So I have to ask, where do you find that motivation to keep driving forward, to keep going back to the gym on the days where you're not at a hundred percent with the days you don't want to get out of bed or the days you just don't want to deal with it. Where do you find that kind of motivation to just, you know, keep putting one foot in front of the other? It's really, I just make it second nature. Um, it's gotten to the point to where, Going to the gym is 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 my therapy, man. If 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 I don't go, if I don't start my day off with some type of physical activity, then I'm setting myself up to have a crappy day. You know, I believe that, you know, everybody's three parts. There's a physical part, you know, there's a spiritual part, and then there's, you know, a mental emotional part. And you gotta give time to all three parts 
you know, or, or else you're just shooting yourself in the foot. So it's it's a necessity. I have to do it. If I go a couple of days without going to the gym or doing something, you know, I feel like I committed a crime. So it's, it's just second nature at this point. I got you, man. I got you. So uh, just a few comments in the uh, comment section. Just want to show them some love before we move on. Aaron, uh, a guy that you know frequents Riot Pro Wrestling, says everybody keep your – look, J.D. and I have put that incident behind us. Yes, I, yes I, I may have been running my mouth a little bit. J.D. may be a little bit of a hothead, but we put it behind us. We put it behind us. It's all good. Um, but, yeah, man, they, they lost their minds when that happened. We'll get to that in just a little bit. But, you know, before we move off the topic of, you know, your training and everything, one thing that was hard for me, and I, I realized – it's hard for a lot of people. You know, you're a pretty big dude. You say you have the biggest arms in Florida. There's people saying, put your money where your mouth is, show the guns off. But um, did you ever struggle to gain weight or was it always easy for you to build that muscle? Because it took me a long time to, to see any kind of results. Yeah, it, um, you know, it, it took a long time. Um, the vast majority, I would say probably most of my life, um, I was actually just just really, really fat. Um, and I would all, so I, I, I was, I started out super skinny, got extra fat, got super skinny again, then I got extra fat. It was a, a surgery I had when I was a kid that kind of, um, started, started all of that. But as far as that in muscle, man, it took years. It, it took years, not because the process takes that long, but because I didn't know what I was doing. Like, um, when I started, I would go to the gym at three in the morning cause there was a 24 hour gym because. I didn't know how to lift. And uh, during the day, people would make fun of me. They would laugh at me. I didn't, mm -hmm. I didn't know what I was doing. You know, I just knew that I was tired of being 300 pounds and having knee problems and back problems and being out of breath, going down a flight of stairs. And, you know, I, I didn't want to end up, you know, dying sick or something like that. So I knew I needed to change. And um, I knew I wanted to, to one day become a wrestler. So, you know. Most of the muscle I got, I would say I probably actually put on in the, in the past three or four years, even though I've been lifting for probably about 10 years. because so I finally figured out how to train, and that was the key. You know, that's that's kind of got to add to what I would think would add to the motivation is because you have come so far, and, and you don't want to start over from scratch. You don't want to – you want to keep driving up the mountain, not sliding down the mountain uh, right. per se. Um, but, you know, you say you that you knew you wanted to be a pro wrestler – um, so I guess we'll start out where almost every interview starts out. Um, when did you discover pro wrestling? Was it always a thing for you or did you have other passions and, and uh, other loves in life before coming to pro wrestling? No, I was into, I was into a lot of other things. Um, wrestling was kind of one of those things I watched uh, with my dad. I was never really into it like that. I mean, I knew who they were. I had some of the, some of the, the toys and the action figures, you know, I was a kid, but it was, never something that I was really into like that. Um, you know, I was more into like basketball, football, um, and just different, different things like that. Um, writing, um, always wanted to be a director, uh, believe it or not. Um, wrestling was kind of the, the last thing. And I guess what made me change was, uh, is I used to watch it with my dad and then my parents ended up, um, they got divorced for a while. So I didn't watch wrestling because, you know, my dad wasn't there. Mm -hmm. But years later, I went back to watching it and there was this guy by the name of, of Bret Hart. And he was, you know. Maybe I you've heard of him. Yeah, you might have heard of him. He <laughs> went from being this, this, this tag team wrestler in the Hart Foundation, you know, wrestling the, the Bulldogs and the Killer Bees and, all these different guys to being, you know, like the guy. He was like the champion. He wasn't, you know, the biggest guy. He wasn't big as like Warrior or Hogan or any any of those guys. Like he wasn't big, you know. And it just made me think like you can you can do that. You I mean you can change your position in life. You can go from being the opening guy to being like, you know, the top guy in a company. And, and that just really just kind of motivated me. So, you know, he, you know, he stood out. He's my favorite wrestler of all time. And it's mainly because of it's not a bad know, choice. Accomplish. So. And, you know, when you look at guys like Bret Hart and, and we got people saying Shawn Michaels in the comments and, and stuff like that, you know, 
they weren't always the like like you said they weren't the biggest guys and and you know i guess this kind of ties into wrestling and everything but you know there for a long time we were we were taught to believe that if you wanted a career in wrestling you had to be six foot five and jack to the moon and then in comes Bret Hart and, and Shawn Michaels and the forbidden name, you know, guys like Chris yeah. and Eddie and stuff like that, who really weren't the biggest guys, but man, they could go. Yeah. Um, looking at the state of pro wrestling now, um, how much do you think that has influenced wrestling and getting away from that cookie cutter kind of build of a wrestler to showing everybody else that, hey, you know, a guy that we both know, a guy like Remy, super talented, but he's never going to be the biggest dude in the locker room. Um, so how do you feel like, you know, the size differences in, you know, wrestling opening up to these smaller guys, how do you feel that's changed wrestling for the better or for worse? No, I definitely think it's made it, made it better. Um, because, you know, let's face it, guys like Remy, they can do things that, you know, so talented that, that, that a lot of us, you know, couldn't do. Now don't misunderstand anything Remy can do. I can do. <laughs> yeah, so, so let's just straighten that out. Um, <laughs> But but man, some of the things that they, that they can do is it's incredible, and you know if you had a bunch of you know two hundred and seventy five pound guys, you know they're not going to be able to do all that stuff. So I think it's made it better. It's made it more exciting, and it gives you it gives you a blend, man. Like not every match is a big man match. Not every match is a power match. You know there are some matches like you know even some of Remy's matches, man, where it just drops your jaw to the floor. So I definitely think it's has made it much better and uh, made it more exciting. Got a comment from Sean Holly, a guy that you know very well, says, you can't copy my elbow. Oh. I don't think he wants to. No, no, none of that. None of that. <laughs> but, you know, getting back into you and your career and your, your road into pro wrestling, um, so you used to watch with your parents, and unfortunately they divorced, and, and you kind of got out of watching wrestling. When did you – so two part question, when did you reintroduce yourself to it? And when did you really decide? Cause you know, you said you wanted to do these other things like directing and stuff like that, which also kind of goes to wrestling because it's storytelling, just a different kind of story. Um, so my two questions for you are, when did you reintroduce yourself into wrestling? And when did you decide that that is the direction you're going? Um, so as far as getting reintroduced to it, like, honestly, I just, you know, I was just doing homework one day after school and just turned it on and it was on and um, yeah, just watched it, you know, because there was there wasn't anything else really on. So, you know, I watched it and then, you know, uh, maybe I'll check it out next week. And then I checked it out again. It's like, OK, well, you know, maybe I'll watch it next week. And and then it started getting good. And I'm like, OK. And then all of a sudden, this this thing called the uh, the NWO happened. I'm like, wait a minute. I know these guys, and, and but they were over here, and now they're over there, and now they're taking over. And I'm like, oh, this is good. This is like a soap opera for guys. I'm like, I <laughs> exactly like exactly what it is. <laughs> yeah. So that's so that's when I um kind of got back into it right during that time. Um, the thing that that made me decide I wanted to do it was uh, WrestleMania 12, Bret Hart, Shawn Michaels, the Iron Man match. I saw that match. And just, man, just the things that they did for an hour and just the story that they told and just to, to be able to have the crowd just in the palm of your hands, man, is is yeah. is the physical aspect. But then you also got, you know, the showmanship of it as well. And and seeing both of those things perfectly married, I was like, this is it. This is what I want to do. That's a wrap. That's a wrap. We got a question coming in from Ashlock209. Uh, says, how long have you been wrestling? So I've been wrestling um, officially 11 years. Um, if you look at actual time, it's more like about five years because I've had a couple really nasty injuries that took me out. So I had a serious neck injury, and I missed, what, like three, three and a half years um, worth of wrestling. Um, I broke in my leg. You know, had knee surgery not even a year ago. So I missed a considerable amount of time. Um, so really it's about five years, mm -hmm. but chronologically 11 years. So, you know, you, you, you bring up the neck injury and stuff like that and taking out for, you know, almost four, almost, almost four years, the better part of, you know, three and a half years. I have to ask because 
I've never, so you and I were kind of talking a few days ago and, um, you know, before I went to the military, I kind of did a little work here on the Georgia Indy circuit, nothing major. Um, but I never really had an injury like that, maybe because I didn't do it that long. Um, but I imagine an injury like that really changes you and, and really changes your perspective on a lot of things. Was there a big, I guess, almost like writer's block um, to get back into the ring? How did that injury affect you? And, and did it did it almost make you not want to go back to wrestling? Or did you always know you were going back? Um, it's It was kind of both, man. It was... The way it affected me, it made me bitter, you know, to be perfectly honest. Um, because here, you know, I, I got hurt. And it was kind of a like a, an old football injury, but it I got hit just right in just the right spot. Mm-hmm. And, um, and that just set every set everything off. Like after the match, you know, the adrenaline wore off and I got home and I had no feeling in my left arm. Um, my whole left side started tingling and stuff. So it was, it was scary. It was scary. I just reached to grab the remote to turn on the TV and I just couldn't feel anything. So it was pretty scary, man. And, um, it just, it, it really made me bitter because I felt like yeah, I was kind of being forced out of something that I just started. Cause at that point I was only like two years in mm-hmm. and it's like, okay, now I'm being forced out, you know, for something that's not even my fault. And, um, I was I was bitter for a while and uh you know I got better and and tried to come back and we have a neck injury man nobody wants to touch you because they don't want to book you and then you get hurt on their show because now they're liable yeah so then nobody would book me so you know I, I wasn't really getting any reps and part of the healing process is once you get far enough along is you got to test drive it and since I didn't test drive it, uh, it was like the, you know, the injury flared up again later. <clears throat> so I ended up going into like a freaking neck brace and it was, it was, it was pretty awful. Um, and they told me, you know, that I could go to rehab, do this and that, but uh, fusion surgery might be in my future. Um, for right now, I, I could avoid it. But um, that was, you know, you know, that was pretty much it. But eventually I got over being bitter and, um, decided that I was just going to make a comeback. And, you know, even if I had to work some some small mud show, you know, wherever I had to get in just to get a shot, I would take it. So that's what I did. Do you ever, whenever you go into the ring and, and when you're wrestling and stuff like that, um, because you say that fusion surgery is maybe in your future, I'm assuming you haven't had it. Is that correct? Right. Correct. Okay. So going into the matches, because I've watched you wrestle – about th- I, I've, I've had the pleasure of seeing you live about three times now. And one of the times I watched you um, was my first time ever ring announcing and you wrestled Vertigo in the main event of a real pro wrestling show. And you both are two physical, really physical kind of guys. When you walk into a match, does that ever, is that ever in the back of your mind or have you been able to just kind of uh, put it in its own little box and, and not let it bother you too much? Yeah, exactly. You just kind of lock it away and just – don't even think about it because if you think about it, then you're going to get hurt. So, you know, and especially with a guy like vertigo, you know, that's, that's a guy I've, I've worked with trained with, you know, many times. So, you know, I know I'm going to be good with him, but you just got to. Yeah. 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 I, I enjoy watching vertigo. That was my first time. Um, I, I got introduced to vertigo through a, another uh, promotion, um, but that was the first night that I got to watch you wrestle, and um, I stand six foot five, and I, I'm I'm not too I'm not too big to ad- or I'm not too proud to admit it. I was the ring announcer for that night as I'm going around getting everybody's height and weight and stuff like that. I just look over and I'm like, who is this guy just gonna demolish tonight? Because you you really are a, a, a thick guy, like you are muscle bound like hell. And um, I just remember looking over at you. I'm like, who is this guy just going to destroy tonight? And then I looked at Ver- – then I saw the card and seen it was Vertigo, and the wheel started spinning in my head. I was like, oh, this is going to be great. This is going to be fantastic. Yeah. Um, you know, you kind of talked about your favorite being Bret Hart. What other wrestlers um, kind of inspired you to adapt that, you know, hard-hitting, impose your will, almost a, a Brock Lesnar-esque kind of style – 
what kind of wrestlers inspired you to to wrestle the way you do? You know what, man? Everybody, everybody. Um, you know, Bret Hart's my favorite, but you know, clearly I, I can't wrestle. You know, like him. Um, I don't when, think many people can. Yeah, yeah, and um, also. You know, I remember when I got to wrestling school, I was like, I'm going to be this great technical wrestler and I'm going to do all of this and that. And and then I looked around and saw I was bigger than almost everybody. And all of that just had to go right out the window. Um, but I, I would say probably the people that inspired me the most as far as like actual developing myself, um, Scott Hall, who I was able to train with for about a year. Um, mm -hmm. He really kind of helped me find confidence in myself and a lot of the stuff I do. If you actually watch, it's a lot of the, it's a lot of the old Scott Hall stuff. Cause he was my, you know, also one of my favorites, you know, coming up. So, you know, next time you, uh, next time you watch any of my stuff, you, if you look, you'll notice it. I'm doing the old Scott Hall deal. Um, so, so definitely Scott. And then as far as like what I do in the ring, I watch everybody. Like um, I watch just just anybody, man, anybody I could take something from. Um, watch a lot of Mike Awesome, a lot of Bam Bam Bigelow, um, mm. a lot of uh, superstar Billy Graham. You're the first person I had on this show to mention that, man. That is one of my <laughs> top five favorite wrestlers of all time. Dude, dude, just the stuff he was doing, man. Just my first introduction to him is when he took that belt from Bob Backlund and just destroyed it. <laughs> and from that point on, I wanted to know everything about this guy. And he had the look, he had the arrogant. The thing that got me about superstar Billy Graham was I wanted to hold him down and shave his freaking sideburns. He made me so mad. Yeah. And, and it's, it's little stuff like that, <laughs> that obnoxiousness that I really feel wrestling is missing today. Yeah, exactly, man. And and that that was always what I what I did. Like everybody today, I can't say everybody, but a lot of people today, if they're gonna study, they're gonna study the current product, and and that's you know and that's fine. You should know, you know, you should know the current product to an extent. But you know, chances are you're not gonna be the next Seth, Seth Rollins. Mm -hmm. You know, you're, you're not. You're not gonna be the next AJ Styles. So I try to always watch this stuff that nobody watches you know i remember a couple years ago everyone was watching survivor series uh like 2019 or whatever it was because brock lesnar was on there i was watching survivor series you know 95 because nobody else was watching it and i was watching you know um i was watching that i was watching survivor series 96 i was watching psycho sid and just watching the way he would terrorize Shawn michaels and you know and, and how he would work that crowd you know so that's that's kind of what I hang my hat on is is I watch the the old stuff that everybody else has forgotten about, um, and I I don't watch as much of the the current stuff because everybody else is doing. It. No man, I'm a um, so I, I've really taken a liking to um to what AEW has been doing. WWE is getting really really boring for me, but I will always the NWA will always have a, a special place in my heart. I. I Nothing in my opinion, nothing in my opinion, nothing will ever come close to a Harley race, dusty flare steamboat kind of matches. And I just, I love that kind of storytelling. Absolutely yeah. love it. But yeah. you know, JD, we've been, we've been talking and, and you, you say that overall 11 years. Um, but, but actually about five years because of all the injuries and stuff. And I like to ask everybody this question because, I get such an array of different answers and, and I love seeing uh, what you guys think on, on the flip side of the coin. Um, so let, let's use the 11 years. If you can go back in time 11 years and give yourself one piece of advice that would have really helped you on your road into pro wrestling, what would that advice be? Something that you know you could have used as a feather in your cap for a rainy day. What would that advice be? Oh man, that's easy. Um, believe in yourself more, push harder, and and do more. The uh, only one standing in your way is you. Yeah, and and dude, uh, I'll I'll tell you this. I I don't not not to toot my own horn, but 
for a long time, people would tell me, hey, you're good, you're ready. And I would tell them, no, I'm not. Look at this guy. I can't do that. Look at that guy. I can't do that. You know, I don't have this look. I don't have this. You know, I, I always found the reasons of why I was not ready. Mm-hmm. And I missed a lot of opportunities. And the fact of the matter is, is a lot of those guys that were supposed to be better than me, man, they're all gone. They quit. None of them lasted. You know, we all got injuries, but other than probably Chico Adams, I'm the only one who lasted. The only one who lasted all those years. Kept coming back. Kept coming back. But that's the only thing I would say is just just to believe in myself more and just just push harder. Forget everybody else. Forget what everybody else says. You know, listen, listen to your own voice and, you know, and just do what you believe. Yeah, and, and we got a lot of uh, a lot of comments in this section. You know, you say you don't want to toot your own horn, and everybody's just telling you to go ahead and toot away, man, because ever since I've advertised it, well, really, ever since I dropped that video of um, – well, you remember the night. Ever since that, yeah. ever since I dropped that video – I mean, video, that was your fault, by the way, just so you know. We're not, we're not going to point fingers here, J.D. We're not going to point – I, I, was, I was a paying customer. I wasn't a wrestler. Um, anyway, <laughs> um, we could joke about it now. That's all that matters. Um but they've kind of been looking back and every time I announce somebody's going to be on the show, cause I love doing independent talent. I've had the opportunity to interview, you know, some, some bigger names with, with like the fed and AEW and stuff like that. But I always love these independent interviews because you guys can literally come on here and say whatever you want. And that's the kind of stuff that I love. You get the true real raw roots of pro wrestling and they've been looking into your stuff, man. And I get, I probably get about seven to eight comments about you a day. What match should I watch of his? Well, and I'm look his stuff with Vertigo, his stuff with Zach's all it's all great, it's all fantastic. Um, so I guess where we'll go from there is you have become a real mainstay with Riot Pro, and that's where I met you. Well, I originally met you at Real, um, but then you you frequent Riot. What was it about Riot that really stuck out to you and really sunk its hooks into you? Like this is my home. This is where I want to be. It was a, uh, man. It was a, it was an upstart company, and um, the thing I liked is that they didn't play this. I'm gonna bring in this former WWE guy or this former TNA guy. I'm not gonna bring in all these former names. You know, I'm gonna be mm-hmm. local. I'm gonna use local talent, and you know, I'm gonna give the local guys a shot. And I was one of those local guys that that got that opportunity. Um. You know, the, the, the owner, you know, you know, God bless his soul. Um, he was, he was, he was a good dude. He was a good dude. Wasn't, you know, exactly into it as far as on the business side of things as he should have been. Mm -hmm. Um, but man, he, he was just all about the local talent. And that was the thing that I, that I really liked. And it was good, you know, not to be paired up with former whoever who, He's already made his money. He's already made his name. So mm-hmm. he's just going to, you know, collect his pay. And he don't got to do anything. You know, he don't have to work hard. And, you know, at Riot, it was, you know, you got two guys. They're young. They're hungry. They both want to make a name for themselves. They both want to give the crowd their money's worth. So they're willing to go out there and kill it, you know, and do whatever they got to do to send people home happy. And and there weren't a lot of promotions that were like that. And, and that was the thing that I, I always liked about Riot. You know, uh, I heard I heard somebody say one time, and um, this has really stuck with me, and I can tell that you honestly believe this too. The independents are the roots of pro wrestling, and without the roots, the tree dies. Yep. Um, and, and that that there's never been a more truer statement about wrestling, in my opinion. Uh, going to some of the viewer comments, I really like this question, um, but it says, JD, as a fan who is just now being introduced to you as a performer, what would you say your crowning achievement has been in your career, or has it even happened yet? That one's that one's kind of tricky because, and like I always I always set set lofty goals, and um, as soon as as soon as I, I check one off, it's like it's, it's on to the next one. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I I don't even know if I could I don't even know if I could pick a moment. Um, I'm trying to think, but I, I don't think I could, 
I don't think I could pick out like a favorite moment or anything like that. Yeah, and, and I like the fact that he says, has it happened yet? Because, you know, you always have those goals, but you never want to say that this is my peak because I personally believe, and, and this is just me as a podcaster, and I'm sure you as a wrestler, our best is yet to come. That's that's the kind of mindset you have to keep. Um, but, you know, getting back into uh, what you were saying about, you know, bringing in all of these formerly known as or this person or that person – one of the things I really like about Riot, and I can honestly say this, um, I can honestly say this about Riot. I've been to about three Riot shows. I'll be going to the fourth, my fourth Riot show coming up soon. We're going to plug that a little later. Um, but I've never seen anybody leave unsatisfied. I've never leave somebody. I've never had somebody leave going, eh, that really wasn't worth it. And I typically hang around till the end because you know I'm networking, trying to get people to do these interviews, handing out cards. So mm -hmm. I mingle with a lot of the fans, and I've never had some. I've never heard somebody say that just wasn't worth my time. Um, so there really is something special happening at Riot Pro. Um, but you know, I, I never understood why you would have these companies, you know, bring in ten to fifteen formerly known as people who they're paying thousands of dollars for an appearance, but you have this homegrown talent that barely gets five dollars in a hot dog. Yeah, I, it just. Maybe it's the politics of pro wrestling that I don't understand, but I just I never understood why you why you would want to alienate yourself from the local talent who is going to be able to carry your company because they're still hungry. Exactly, exactly. You know, and I and I've been on those shows, man, and like I, I get it, I get why. You know, you want to have your names. You know, and, and and not all of them are bad. There are some of them who you know. There's a few mm -hmm. who man, they will go in and work. There's a few, but but those guys are rare. Um, it's you know, it's I'll tell you this, man. Having been on a, a lot of those shows, I've been on shows where there's been one or two, and I've been on shows where half the the card is former WWE or something like that. Mm -hmm. It's frustrating, man. It's frustrating. It is demoralizing, not because you know you feel like you're inferior. Like that's not why, but it's it's because you know that you're setting up the ring, you're doing a teardown, you're doing all of these different aspects to help this show run. Not to mention you're probably going out there and, and killing yourself in your match or the hardcore match, whatever you're doing. And then you got this, you know, this other guy who's probably bitter about the business, doesn't care about the business, and his envelope is ten times thicker than yours. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And that's that's just demoralizing. It, it really is. Yeah, I've actually been at a show and um, I was delivering something to the show and, and I had to go backstage to do it. And just as I'm passing through, I heard a former TV guy go, nope, I don't bump. Then why are you here? <laughs> yeah. Like, like, why are you here? Um, We have a very interesting question because I don't think I could ever picture this. Uh, but we have a question from Ashlock saying, JDX, can you ever picture yourself as a face? As, as far as, it, as far as that goes, like, I'm just me. Like, you know, just honestly, I'm, I'm just me. Like I'm always the same, whether I'm a, a, a face or, or a heel, I'm just the same person, mm -hmm. you know, like my intensity is the same. What I do is the same, you know, so, so, so whether you cheer or boo, I, I guess, you know, it's, it's kind of up to you. And, and honestly, even as a, as a heel, so to say, I get cheered more. Um, years ago when I used to be a face, I got booed out of the building. <laughs> so, that's a, that I think that might be just a little bit backwards, but it, that's how that's, you know, you got to play the cards you're dealt. And sometimes that's just how it works. So um, while we're on this topic, uh, let's talk about getting booed for a little bit um, and talk about you being – look, I'm, I'm man enough to admit it. The reason I got so vocal as I did is because you really are a, a great heel, and and I have no problem saying that to you, not to mention, you know, Zach being one of my better friends. So, obviously, um, I'm going to be a little bit more loud during his matches and stuff. But aside from, you know, mine and your little altercation, you being the kind of heel that you are, have you ever had that before where, like, a fan will try to like charge the ring or, or you'll be nose to nose with a fan or, or something along those lines. 
Oh yeah, multiple times. <laughs> multiple times. Any uh any stories that stand out? Dude, um so I, I've been told multiple times you can't touch the fans. And um and I get why. Liability reasons. And my response is always then tell them to stay in their place. They pay for a seat, tell them to stay in their seat. Mm-hmm. Um craziest thing I guess would be is uh, some guy was talking trash to me at a show, so I told him to come up. But I told him to come up front and say that. So he proceeds to walk up front, and I pie-faced him. And then I hear one of the other wrestlers go, dude, that was my dad. <laughs> <laughs> no way. Whoops. <laughs> so. Oh, just pulling a 2009 Randy Orton move, huh? <laughs> dude. Yeah, so I've been yelled at. A lot of times for uh for for confronting fans, um, it, it's just it's just like this man. Like I'm just I'm just me, and 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 a lot of times I know they'll think, oh, it's a good humor. He's just playing a character. No, I'm me. I don't play a character. I don't play a gimmick. I'm literally just me. And on any day of the week, if someone runs up into my face, you know, trash talking me, I'm not just gonna let them do it. So why would I let someone do it at a show? Absolutely not. So. That's just how it is. No, and and like I said, I completely understand that. Um, I for one didn't. Ex- I knew not to approach the ring, not only because you know it's it's etiquette when you're at a show, but also there were like six of you in there. I'm, I, I mean, Mama didn't yeah. raise no bitch, but I ain't stupid either. Right. Uh, let's just go and get that out of the way, and and raise a pretty big boy. So, um, but you know, we're sitting here talking about you know. You working, you you being who you are and living the gimmick and and really not the gimmick, but just who you are and it being real to you. And I think that's one of the big things missing in pro wrestling is people try to put on this act. And then once the bell rings, it's like the act is over. They get to put it down. Um, so in your words, what do you think is missing from pro wrestling now um, that we had back in the day that that we really need to focus on bringing back to make the product as a whole better? Man, just that's that's a big question. You know, probably the, the biggest thing, man, is just just really a love for wrestling. You know, I hear a lot of people, you know, they'll say, oh, I love wrestling, but you can't get them to train. Mm-hmm. You can't get them to go to training to get better. You can't get them to get in shape, you know, but you love this thing so much. You're not going to make yourself to being better, you know, so. Like and people don't. They don't. They don't put in time on the mat. They don't put in time in the gym. And they'll say, "Oh, well, Kevin Owens doesn't work out." Yeah, but it's Kevin Owens. He's an anomaly. You know, <laughs> even when he was when he was working as Kevin Steen, that guy was an anomaly. You know, what <laughs> he's I mean? the unicorn. Uh, dude, his 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 wrestling IQ is, you know, but there there's there's not everybody's not going to be him. So he's that exception. You know, and sometimes you can make that work. But the rest of us, you know, you know, we got to we got to put in the work and people don't put in time during film. And one of the things when I first decided, hey, I'm actually going to try to go to a wrestling school is I made myself a promise that I would dedicate any spare time I had to study in a match or study in promo. You know, I made that years ago before I started and I still do that today. So every day, you know, I'm watching matches just for little, you know just for little tidbits, you know, that I can take, or I'm watching promos, you know, or I'm reading comments about promos, Mm -hmm. you know, I'm always looking for something to make me better. Um, Cause that's what a real joy is, you know, honestly, as corny as it sounds like when I go to the ring, I'm demonstrating all the work I put in. Some people think, Oh, you know, Oh, you know, show day. So now I get to show out. I get to do this. I get to do all of that. And I think those people look at it wrong. For me, it's like taking the exam. Okay, you know, this is how I've been eating. This is how I've been training. You know, this is how I've been lifting. This is what I've been watching. This is what I've been thinking. Let's put it all together. Let's see if it works. You know, absolutely. And and based off of, you know, your answer, I do have, you know, some questions off of that that I – because you have such an – you have such an alert mind for wrestling. Like – Things just stand out to you that other people don't really quite catch. And I can see that just by talking to you. 
Um, so going back to the beginning of your answer, you know, Kevin Owens being an, being an anomaly, being the unicorn, um, and people just thinking, oh, well, he doesn't do it. I have to, I don't have to do it either. I can be just like that. I feel like that's the wrong attitude to have. And not only is it the wrong attitude to have because you're just looking for the lazy way out, but I feel it's disrespectful not only to the business, but also to the people you get in the ring with because you are asking them to trust you with their body, yep. yet you are not doing the things you need to do to be trusted with their body. Yeah. Um, so I just feel like that's the wrong kind of mindset to have. Um, but getting into the promos, because I have seen, I have seen some of your promos. I've seen, you know, ever since I started going to riot and, and, um, pretty much everything after I followed you very closely, everything after the uh, vertigo match, uh, because that's when I was introduced to you and much like a guy by the name of Logan Cruz, uh, one half of the gifted, not sure if you're familiar with him or not. Um, yeah. but the way he puts the things he does with his promos, you and him are like right there because it's not just, Oh, let me turn the phone on in the car and just talk for, for 10 minutes. We need to set the setting. We need to, it needs to be believable. How important is it? Because I feel like a lot of people focus on the in-ring stuff and, and maybe they focus on the gym stuff, but I feel like the promos is where people really lack. Um, How important is it to really, hone your craft on the microphone just as much as in the ring. Man, I'll tell you like this. You either got to be an incredible worker or you got to be able to talk. If if you're an incredible worker, people will forgive the fact that you can't talk. But if you're a great talker, they will overlook the fact that you're not a good worker. So, And if you can do them both, then you're money. So I, I would say being able to talk is way more important than being able to wrestle. So we have a lot of people that are in, in this chat. We have a lot of people that watch these interviews um, to, to really soak up the knowledge like you were talking about. A lot of them um, looking to find wrestling schools and, and you know make their first steps onto their pro wrestling journey. Um, if you were to offer any kind of advice to those guys – or anything that they might need to know or things they should focus on, what would your advice be to somebody who is who is wanting to pursue this as a career? Um, so you could kind of chop it up into parts. Um, the first the first advice I always give to anybody who's thinking about wrestling is, um, is I always tell them, figure out what price you're willing to pay, not in terms of money, but like mentally and emotionally and physically figure out what price you're willing to pay up front. And once you figure that out, don't negotiate. Like when I started training, you know, I had to drive from Northside Jacksonville um, down to Orlando. So from where I was, it was a two and a half hour drive one way. Mm. So, but I did it twice a week. So two and a half hours down, train for three hours, two and a half hours back. Um, and I worked both days. So I would get out of work, go to wrestling, come back, sleep for like three hours, then get up and go to work all day. Um, so, but I was willing to pay that price. And I spent a hell of a lot of money in gas, probably about $170 a week. Jesus. Gas. But I was willing to pay that price and I didn't negotiate that. Um, and just so that's the first piece of advice I would give anyone. Like, don't say it was too far, it's too this, it's too that. Figure out what price you're willing to pay, and then once you do that, negotiations are off. You, you start, you gotta you gotta go through it. Um, so that's the first thing I, I would tell anyone. The second thing is is just study study anything, study anything. Like there's gyms in everything, absolutely mm-hmm. everything. Like um, if we use promos for example, like um, it's real easy to to get in the camera and yell and I'm going to beat you up and I'm going to hit my move and your ass is grass. And I'm going to do, it's real easy to anybody can do that. Mm-hmm. But that's, that's boring. Like I put such a ridiculous amount of time into to studying promos. Like I don't just watch promos. Um, I'll go to show recaps and I'll go into the comment sections and just look at everybody fighting with each other and just look at all the trash you're talking. Like, oh, this guy really got that guy. That's something I could possibly use. So 
I literally just keep a bank of, of content in my head as well as on paper. So that way, when I need to cut a promo or I, I need to, whether it's I'm filming it or whether it's live, I already, I already have so much stuff that I can see that I don't even have to think. It's just, it's just automatic. Um, you can get material from watching SpongeBob. The materials <laughs> everywhere. You mm -hmm. just got to be alert enough to pull it out. So, who are some of your favorite promo artists? Because you know, we kind of talked about, you know, who your in-ring influences were. When you go back and you're watching these promos, whether it be professional wrestling or independent wrestling, because for me, it always comes down to you know, Piper, Jake the Snake, and Dusty, um, and and occasionally a Flair. I just feel like Flair is is such a common choice. Um, but when it comes to the microphone work, who are some of your favorite influences? Man, another tough question. If, if I had to pick like one person to watch right now, probably Macho Man. Because um, a lot of his stuff was simple, but I love the way he would use props um, in his promos. The coffee so, creamer. No, dude, no, no, nobody does that stuff anymore. Nobody does it. You know, you can't even get them to hold the camera on their phone the right way. You know, <laughs> it, no, 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 it drives no, me crazy. And, and, and bro, he would cut his promos and he was so into his own world that even though what he said might have been nonsense, you believed it. Mm -hmm. Because when he delivered it, you could tell he believed what he was saying. He spoke with such conviction that it made you believe it. Exactly. So, he could have so, told you the sky was purple, and you would have you would have walked outside like I didn't know that shit was purple. Exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. So he's probably one of my favorites to watch. But um, if I had to pick one person, but you know, so Samoa Joe, just because when he would deliver a promo, there was just bad intentions in it. Like you know, no matter what he said, he said it with such disdain and seriousness that you couldn't doubt him. You know, you couldn't doubt him. And, you know, like even Bret Hart, you know, like his promos were always, you know, the typical babyface promos, but they were always very passionate. And if he said he was going to beat you, he beat you. You know, he did whatever he said. So mm -hmm. so those are probably some of my favorites, but I, I watch absolutely anybody and everybody um, when it comes to promos. So we're, we're getting close to, you know, the – well, we're actually over the 45-minute mark. I do have a few more questions for you. Then I want to talk about the show coming up. Um, but my final question for you before you start talking about the next uh, the next Riot show coming up. J.D., what gets you excited on, on show day? Is it the match? Is it the crowd? Is it a combination of everything? When you show up to that venue and you know you're on the card, what is it that just that just drives you absolutely crazy more than anything else that just inspires you to do better each and every single time. What lights the fire of JDX? Um, so, so that's probably threefold. So, number one is uh, is proving myself right. You know, just knowing like whatever I've been doing, like the preparation I put in, knowing that is now it's going to pay off. Um, and. You know, just just kind of believing in myself and taking a bet on myself, you, you know, because, you know, we know the world is full of haters, you know, mm -hmm. it's full of haters. It's full of people who want to go on Facebook and cry and talk trash, you know, and put you down and run you down. So proving myself right, you know, is number one. Proving them wrong, you know, would be number two. Um, I always look at it as when I go in there that. I'm trying to steal the show, you know, regardless, you know, and I'm not going to do 20 flips, even though I can, you know, what I'm going to give, what I'm going to give people is, is, is something that when my match is done, they're going to say that was real. Like he hit him. He hated him. He tried to kill him. You know, they're going to say it's real. They're never going to say it was, you know, that I was fake. And, and I just think of, uh, you know, all the people, who passed on me, all the people who wouldn't book me, you know, people who literally told me, oh, you never be shit. You'll never be nothing. You'll never go anywhere in this business. You know, mm -hmm. people who told me I didn't have it, 
people who told me I'd never be anything more than an opener, you know, and I had a lot of that crap. So proving them wrong. And then thirdly, it's just, uh, you know, honestly, just being in front of the people, you know, whether they're cheering, whether they're booing, just as long as they're invested. Exactly, man. For that 10 minutes that I'm out there, just pulling them in, you know, pulling them in and just, just, just making them believe. And then, you know, after the show, if someone says, you know what, man, that was good. I think I want to be a wrestler. Job done. No, absolutely. And Ashlock, I want to address your comment um, because this has actually happened a few times. Um, JDX versus Monstar, and they're always such hard-hitting matches. And, and while JD's here, I'm sure he'll agree that even though we've seen it a few times, that rivalry is far from over. Dude. I was trying to I was trying to avoid this, this Zach situation. So, <laughs> but no, but you know what? We, me and Zach, we're definitely not over. I don't personally. I don't dislike Zach. I don't hate Zach or any of that stuff. Um, I just don't like this idea that that Zach is the best, and everybody wants to be on a monster bandwagon. Oh, Zach overcame depression, and, and Zach fought back from this, and and. and 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 Zach is clean and, and all it. So what? So what? You know what I'm saying? Like the amount of injuries that I've had, that I've had to come back from. Zach ain't never did that. All of the things that I've had to do, the path I had to take to get here, Zach can go through that path, and I didn't have to fall in no glass and no bob wire or no thumbtacks. I didn't have to do any of that. I didn't have to do none of that stuff. So, in my mind, Zach took the cheap way. So, uh, it's pretty heavy words, JD. Some pretty heavy words. And um, tell it like it is. I'm gonna, I'm gonna stay professional. I'm I'm gonna stay professional. Um, but you know, just based off of your answer, do you think you're better than? Do you think Zach is beneath you? I know Zach's beneath me. Um, to play devil's advocate, he is the Riot Pro heavyweight champion. Um, that he is your promotion. Be. He shouldn't be. But <laughs> either way. We, we could go back and forth all day long. Um, I want to be respectful of your time. Um, so I have one other question for you before we start wrapping things up. And I want to take a chance to let everybody know about the upcoming Riot show right here, ladies and gentlemen. The Day of Reckoning, Riot Pro Wrestling, guys. You can find this all over their social media page. I know you guys follow their Facebook. You guys went and followed it when uh, – Oh, HBO was live and um, he was doing his thing or a uh, showtime. I apologize sure. when our showtime was live. So I know you guys are on there. Make sure you're keeping up with everything they have going on. But uh, JD, just based on this flyer right here, you know, you've got Remy Chico, you Zach Ray. It, it, it's looking to be a stacked card, even though matches haven't been announced yet. Um, going into this, going into this show, how excited are you for, you know, Riot to be hosting their next show and getting back in the ring. And, and as you say, doing what you do better than anybody else. And and why should people come check out the Riot show? Oh, man, so I'm super excited. You know, it's the, it's the anniversary show for Riot. Um, company has you know, been around for a little while. Been around for a little while, so I'm super excited. Um, the thing that makes me most excited is – really? I didn't say a word, J.D. The thing that I'm most excited about is – I know I'm finally gonna get that match with Zach, you know. So, so, so that's the thing I'm most excited about. Um, and, I, and I'm gonna show everybody, man, that that Zach, Zach is not as great as everyone thinks he is. I've been Zach before. I've been Zach multiple times. I've been Zach every time. I'll beat him again. So, did we just get a little bit of a spoiler? Is it you taking on Zach one on one finally? It should be. It should be. Should be. Yeah, it, it should be because, uh, dude. <laughs> I never lost the title, number one. I never lost it. And when you were there, when you were there, you saw me. You saw me beat Zach. You saw me. I, pin no, him. no, no. I time. saw I saw you and your I saw you and your squad come out, jump Zach, get boots to faces. One got choke slammed into a concussion, and then with loophole tactics and the power of the GM, I saw you walk away with the title, but I didn't see you win the title. 
I know we agreed to be professional, JD. I just got to call a spade a spade. As far as them coming out, I have nothing to do with that. I was declared the number one contender. Zach's supposed to be a fighting champion. He fought. He lost. Into that. Either Speaking way. Speaking of Showtime. <laughs> there we go. Some backup. You, you can't honestly sit here and expect us to believe you did not know they were going to come out with you. Dude, I had nothing to do with it. So I you're saying that that whole thing wasn't preconceived? Why would it be preconceived? What, dude? Why would I do something like that? Because you wanted the title. The Incorrect. whoever holds the is is it true? Is it true that in pro wrestling, whoever holds the title, whoever wins the title, whoever leaves as champion, leaves with a bigger purse? That is true. So why wouldn't you want to do that? And you've admitted to yourself. That you're not a bad guy, you're just who you are. So if that's the kind of person that you are, I apologize, the kind of wrestler that you are, why wouldn't you do that? And if Showtime, the general manager walks up to you and says, hey, let's do this, why wouldn't you do it? It's more money. It's just, dude, it's, it's, not about, it's not about money. Maybe some people, that's what it's about. For me, it's not about money, all right? For me, it's about the fact of being the best. I know I'm better than Zach. I know I am. I've been screwed out of the title multiple times. As a matter of fact, I never even lost the title. Not, oh, I wasn't pinned. No, I never even lost the title. So as far as that goes, I was declared the number one contender. Zach is supposed to be a fighting champion. I fought Zach. Zach lost. I didn't jump Zach. I only touched him once the bell rung. And when the bell rung again, I was champion. I, I, will, didn't say, I will say that you are – you should be the number one contender. You did – you had two mat, two matches that night. In your first one, you did win fair and square, the number one contender match. I, I, I see that. But everything that happened after that, I, I – we're going to have to agree to disagree or else we'll be on here all night. Um, you guys had your tag match, which Zach Monstar and Johnny Ruto won the tag titles. They walked in as challengers, left as champions. Yeah. But to this point, like people ran out of the back and jumped us. Did you forget about that part? Or are we just not going to mention that? I mean, we can mention it, but we'll have to mention that the same guys who jumped Zach first ran out before the Booyah Club and everybody else. Now you just get into unnecessary details now. How is it unnecessary? You want to bring up them, but you don't want to bring up yours. I thought this was going to be professional. Now you're just being biased. No. You're right. I want to be professional, but part of being professional is saying the facts. Ray and his team ran out first, and then Booyah Club and Bud Heavy and all of them ran out second. Can we agree on that? No, we can't. You ever, you ever thought about working for Fox News? Because the way you put spin on things, man, I think you would be perfect. Well, if anybody wants to go back and check, that footage is on twitch.tv slash Kevin, And you can decide for yourself who is telling the truth or who's, who's grasping at straws. Um, but, J.D., if you do end up taking on Zach one-on-one -on -one for the title, despite him being my friend, I do, I do wish you the best of luck. I know it'll be a hard-hitting match regardless of who I think will win. I think it'll be a great match. Who do you think? I'll, will win? I'll say that I think it'll be a great match. Who do you think will win? I've seen Zach run through your entire squad, and you still had to use a title to get a three count. So I've never seen you come at Zach one on one. And the only time you did come at him fair, they walked away with your titles. So I'm not a betting man, but if I was, I'd have to say Zach. You got any other questions? Um, just one. Because I can tell you're getting irritated. I can tell you want to get out of here. For anybody who would like to follow you or find you on social media, where can they find you on social media? That's the easy one. On Facebook, JD Dalton. Twitter, Real JDX. IG, The JDX. There you go, guys. There's all of JD's social medias and JD. Despite how the end of the convers the end of the interview happened, I do sincerely want to thank you for your time, and, and I appreciate um, you making the time to do this interview. And I I do look forward to the show coming up. 
uh, with Riot Day of Reckoning. And, um, you know, hopefully I'll, I'll be able to be there and uh, watch you wrestle, whether it be against Zach or anybody else. I do wish you the best of luck in, in your upcoming matches, and I can't wait to see him. Thank you for that, and I hope you are there. See me whip his ass. <laughs> well, I'll be there, and uh, J.D., thank you so much. Guys, we are going to go ahead and end the interview. I do, Like I said, I do want to thank J.D. for his time. We'll be back next week with another pro wrestling interview. The real pro wrestling women's champion, Kelsey Reagan, will join me live this coming Thursday, 7 p.m., uh, for another pro wrestling interview. Um, J.D., if you're not too upset, I would like one more second of your time when the live feed ends. But I understand if you want to go ahead and leave. But with that being said, guys, thank you all for being here. We'll see you next week when Kelsey Reagan joins us live in the war room. Thanks, guys, and we'll see you next time.